what is up guys jeremy here and welcome back to another lock plus guide video thing whatever this is i don't know this is the third one i'm recording i'm just inspired by these right now um i like lock plus i i use it all the time and i just want you guys to see how it works um so hopefully you guys have been enjoying this little kind of mini series that i've been doing uh but in this video what I'll do is I'll show you guys how to install custom fonts. It's it's really quite easy. And uh, I guess I'll just make a simple widget, um, for example, and put it on my home screen and hopefully it looks cool. Uh, so as you guys can probably tell, we're on my home screen. Now what sucks is if I click my lock button to go to the lock screen, I'm pretty sure it ends the recording. So once we go out to lock plus here later in the video, I'm probably gonna have to do some, some editing work, um, but I'm recording it in this uh, this format because you guys should be able to watch this in portrait mode um, on your on your iPhone from YouTube, and it should take up your whole screen and look like like a phone in front of you that I'm controlling. So uh, I like doing this when I do really advanced stuff. I just think it's easier for you guys to see. It's easier for me to record, um, and I just uh, like doing it this way. Sometimes I like to mix it up a bit. Uh, so. To install custom fonts with Lock Plus, um, it's really easy. So we'll just go into Filesa. You'll need Filesa. A lot of the stuff I do requires Filesa. And uh, in my favorites here, you guys should have this in your favorites as well by default is Documents. Okay. So if you scroll down, you'll find the Lock Plus fonts folder right here. So here's all the fonts that are contained in Lock Plus super simple you literally just put the font into this into this folder you can you can load them into lock plus from the from the menu system on the lock screen or you can just put the font in here and respring your device i think it's easier just to throw the font in here and then do a respring i have some custom fonts that i have installed and these are downloaded from defont and as you can see, it's all these fonts that have the triple A. I do that to keep them at the top because they're fonts that I want to use on the regular. I don't want to have to alphabetically search for each font individually from the library of pre-installed fonts. So it's a little tip that might help you guys out. Just put three A's before the name. Now, the the naming is gotta be has to be specific. Uh, so you guys might struggle here so i'm going to try to walk you through installing fonts so if you guys already clicked out of the video uh for those of you that did click out of the video you're going to have a rough time so big shout out to everyone that's still watching so we're going to install a font so um i like to use the font why don't we just i'm just right in the home page here let's just do this font for example um keep in mind any of these characters as you can see like uh like the euros and some of these characters don't have a, a symbol for it. If you're gonna use it for some of these symbols, it'll be broken. I'm just using it for the A through Z text. So I'm just gonna click on download. And I'm downloading this in Google Chrome. I like to use Google Chrome. Just my preference, you could do this in Safari or whatever. Just click download, we'll download the font. Now I'm gonna do open in. And I'm gonna swipe up until I can go to files. -a. And I'm just gonna save it right to the documents folder. So we've downloaded a font. We can go into documents. So there is the zip file. It's highlighted for you guys so you can see it. Um, you just click it to unzip it. All right, so we can go in the folder and this one actually is gonna work fine uh, right off the bat. So with the way the name is set up, the AATOS.OTF, um, Lock Plus needs OTF fonts and that's fine. Even if you download a TTF font, you can change the file extension to OTF by doing this, by clicking on edit, and then at the bottom, just rename. Uh, you can actually just rename it to OTF, and it's it's totally fine, the font will still work. It won't let me rename it because there's already an OTF, but uh, you can rename a .TTF to a .OTF, and that'll work fine. I'm just gonna cancel it. Uh, now, another thing you guys are gonna encounter if you're installing custom fonts, let me just make up a name here. So if the font's name has spaces like this or characters like this or any inconsistencies in the name, you have to 
don't quote me on this, but from what I've encountered, you have to have only a name. So you don't want any characters. You don't want any spaces. Just just letters or numbers. No spaces, no nothing. It'll it'll break it'll break the code for the font. And as you guys know, I like to do a triple A before the name. So I know it's one of my custom fonts, just like that. Now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and just copy it and then we can paste it into the lock plus fonts. So we can just go ahead and paste in the font. So now this font will be available from lock plus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a respring, which is probably going to kill my recording. Uh, so I will be back once I'm done respringing. Okay, my device is done doing a respring. I'm on the lock screen still. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the creator and I'm going to, uh, actually what I'll do is I'll just select on this previous one. This is one that I was working on in the previous episode, as you guys remember, which looks completely garbage. Uh, but if we go into fonts here, you can see there is the triple A ATOS. So here's the font I literally just showed you guys how to install. And as you can see, I applied it with lock plus. And it's as easy as that. Now I'm actually gonna make this into a simple, simple, simple widget for my home screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna clear my screen because that looks like trash. And we're gonna go back in. I'm gonna add an element. We're gonna go to clock. We're gonna go to day. We're gonna go to Thursday, close it, select on it. I'm gonna pull it up. Now I'm gonna do this real quick so you guys can see um, kind of how I use this to customize. I'm not going to explain. I kind of explained more so in the f uh, second episode on how I like to do this. So you guys are just going to watch me um, make edits in real time and uh, how quickly I can do it since I've been doing it for so long. I didn't mean to adjust width, but we'll recenter that. Just wanted to make it a little bit taller. As you can see, I made the box really huge. I like to do that sometimes just so I know there's going to be no cutoff regions uh, for anything. We're going to go into fonts and um, I'm just going to use this one. I showed you guys how to install a font. Now I'm going to simply show you guys how to make a real simple widget and use it on your home screen. And this was going to be one that I would probably use because I sometimes like simple stuff um, and just a simple um, name of the day is, is enough to keep me satisfied. So I'm just going to center that. And uh, this one I'll add some shadowing because shadowing I think looks really nice. We'll blur it up to maybe three and then we'll give it a little bit of offsetting so it gives it kind of a 3D look, maybe a blur value of two, just like so. And I think that's, I'm just gonna keep it like that. Like that's simple, it's clean, the text is cool. So I'm gonna export this to be used with Zen HTML, so we'll go into exporting. I will, I will export this one as the widget on the right and not an SB HTML. And uh, the reason being is because with export widget, the one on the right, you can actually resize it. And I'll show you guys that trick as well. It's really handy to know. So we're gonna export the widget. Yes, I already have one named A A A A A because that was a test one that I made. So I guess we'll make another test one, and we'll make this one B B B B B B B B B. Okay. So it's exporting and now it has exported. And now I'm gonna jump into my phone and it's gonna stop the recording again. Maybe, are we still recording? Did it let me actually trans change screens and continue recording? Looks like it has, sweet, so I don't have to restart it. But we'll go into settings, we'll go to mods, we'll go to Zen HTML, we'll go to home screen, background widgets, add widget, and we're gonna add the B, 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 B. There it is. And we'll position it down here because that'll look cool, right? Check on it, let's take a look at it. That's pretty sweet. Let's go back into it. I'll show you guys how to adjust the size. So you have a scaling value here. This, the default size, at least the one that this one is at is 1.0. If you wanna make it bigger, you can make it like 1.3. Click done. It's not going to show the changes yet. Click on the check mark. Now go back into it and look at that. It's bigger. So you can make the widgets bigger or smaller with that. And this is pretty cool. Really simple. Just a simple day widget, but it looks neat. Another thing that's really handy, and you can do this. Um, 
when you're creating widgets, if you ever get curious as to what is it going to look like with different day names, what you can do is hop into your settings and you can go to general and then you can go to date and time and you can turn off automatic and you can adjust this and it will change Zen HTML in real time. It'll show you a different day. So let's see what, uh, let's see what Friday looks like. Maybe because I'm going back to the future or yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it changed it to Friday. Let's see what Monday looks like. Sometimes you got to jump around a little bit. There's Monday just takes it a second to load, but you can go through each day and you can see what the, what it's going to look like, uh, depending on what day that way, if you have a very complex widget, uh, with sizing and stuff like that, you can see if it's going to fit the widget properly. And as you guys can see, you can just go through and see what what the different days look like. Um, you can also, for weather, you can get another tweak from Cydia that like allows you to fake your location. And if you open a weather app that has radar and you see where it's raining, at least this is how I know you can test it, you can fake your location to a location that's raining and if you guys are using weather widgets, you can actually display different weather conditions by faking your GPS location. I thought that that was pretty cool when I figured that out, but I don't really use that too much. Um, but I think that'll be it for this video, guys. This is how you're gonna install custom fonts with Lock Plus. Um, also some other basic little tips and tricks here that I showed you guys. So hopefully hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this series. If you did, uh, definitely throw me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot here at the channel. And if you guys wanna see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to click that subscribe button. This has been Jeremy, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.